Hello everyone, my name is Steven Zapata. I'm a concept artist, illustrator, online art teacher, and former instructor at Art Center College of Design. I would like to introduce you to my new drawing course, Form from Imagination, a course designed to help you draw with confidence from your mind. Maybe you wanna be a professional illustrator or designer. Maybe you wanna be a master with a pencil. Or maybe you just wanna be the best artist that you can be. Beautiful goals but it's not always clear how to improve the work that you do from imagination. Over the past six months, I've taken all of the little eurekas, tips, and essential exercises that gave me confidence drawing from my mind and compiled them into a sequential course. We start with the absolute foundations, covering the scientific nature of light and shadow, how to hatch, how to create flat tones, how to render spheres and cubes. And step by step, we move through combined shapes, complex shapes, organic shapes. We cover how to simplify extremely complex subjects like the head into basic shapes so that you can handle them more easily from your head. We look at how to understand and treat details. And by the end of these 14 chapters with over 50 video lessons, you'll be ready to do complex designs from your mind with fidelity and energy. And all the demos are done in pencil on paper, so you can do all of the assignments even if you don't have a fancy digital art setup. But I also have demos, instructions, and modifications to the assignments for those who do want to do them digitally. Here's how it works. Go to formfromimagination.com and sign up for the course. Download the assignment book and start watching the lectures. Do the assignments at your own pace. Take your time with them and use this self-study to develop your patience. When you're done, post your assignments in the exclusive community hub, and I'll personally critique your work with drawovers, diagrams, and advice. I want you to know, this course is no joke just because it's online. It is challenging content, and it is more complete than it would be if I was teaching this class at an art college as I have before. If I was teaching this class in person at Art Center today, I would just play these videos in class, knowing full well that they're the most concise, focused, edited, step-by-step -step way to convey the material. So I'm serious when I say, this course isn't just a substitute for a college level course, it's better than a college level course. And you don't have to pay thousands of dollars per credit and wind up hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt. So thank you for checking out the course. Thank you for watching this and for your support. And thank you for drawing and making your artwork. The world needs it. I'll see you soon. The year is 87.039, new nonlinear time. It's been 50,000 years since Steven Zapata's final art stream but we still live in a golden age defined by the gifts his stream bestowed upon mankind. Faster than light travel, eternal life, Stephen cloning, and the keys to a truly galactic human civilization. My name is Stave Satipaz, a reminder clone of Stephen Zapata, an exact reproduction of his personality as constructed by an AI compiling millions of hours of his original art streams. By all accounts, I'm exactly like the original Stephen's public persona, just more muscular, exactly as he would have wanted. I travel the stars on my light tracer, a dream of Steven. My crew is, of course, all clones of Steven. Some of my officers are reminders like me, but not all. Some are bio clones, and yet others are aspectoids, clones who, instead of trying to capture his full essence, amplify a particular portion of the original Steven's personality. We've spent hundreds of years drawing, exploring, and philosophizing while snaking our way through the stars, spreading the good word of design. But we've had another secret mission as we've cruised the cosmos. We, I, seek information on the legendary originals, Stephen Zapata's true drawings that he flung wide across the stars at the end of his life on Earth, never to be seen again. My crew thinks I'm looking for them for the same reason all the other madmen do because they would be valuable beyond all reason. But they don't know what I know, that a critical mass of originals in the hands of a trained reminder can provide a psychic link to the original Stephen mind. Once I collect enough, I'll be able to fulfill my destiny and achieve psychological continuity with the original Stephen. And through me, he will live again to usher in golden ages of art forever. Drawing Ascendant, 
The Eternal Chronicles of Stephen Zapata. Lasting Legacy 1, Epic 1. Ooh, yes. Streaming, 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 streaming. The incredible technology, the modern technology that is streaming. The incredible modern technology of streaming. I'm doing it, I'm live on the internet, I'm checking audio levels. We must see what the audio levels are. Engage audio level checking. Move this over there. Put this over here. Hello to Plexel, Nobody, Alejandro Diaz, Art Lucas, Falls, Drive-By Commenter, Aldrin Miles Bartosa. JG Art World, Chris Shymas, Drive-By Commenter, Mohammed Al Miladi, Mosh Mosin Nakvi, Fictional Key Art, Agus Matej K, and of course, how could we forget Arctic Monkey, who says, Hola, como estas? Hello, everybody. Um, let's do some drawing. I don't know what I'm drawing today. Didn't draw too much over the holiday break here in the United States, so I'm going to look for something to draw. I did draw a little bit, did a few studies, worked on a couple thumbnails, but nothing major. Hello, Lucas. What's up, Steven? Uh, Settevini? Settevini? Nothing much. You're not going to be able to see what I'm doing for a bit here. It's going to be very light. I'm going to need my kneaded eraser, wherever the hell that might be. Hey, Steven, you streaming? Oh, I'm streaming, dog. Dog, I'm streaming right now. Look for some flows. Is it possible that we'll draw a monster? It is possible. Hope everybody's summer is going well. It's getting uh, very hot and humid here in New York. Intense sun, high humidity, high temperatures, and air pollution. Great mix. Draw a monster lady? No way. I have been drawing ladies lately when I do my photo studies, but I would never do that live on the internet. The perverts would get out of control. No, too regular. Let's just 
to rub all of that away, make it all disappear. I don't think I'm feeling this music right now. Let's just work in silence and gentle air conditioner hum for a little bit. Steve, can you draw braids in a man's hair, just like one big one? Um, no. I mean, I can, but will I? You know, that's the big question, will I? Not right now. Stephen, have you seen the work of Serif Karasu? Uh, I would look it up, except my mouse is not charged right now. If I remember later, I'll look at it. Usually, I have seen the person's work, I just don't remember their name. Mostri Taz and Yuri says, is drawing clothing very hard or more easy than muscle? Um, you know, things like that are gonna vary from artist to artist, but um, I'm gonna take a stab at a generalization and say that it's easier, but um, there's more variety to clothing than there is to like anatomical configurations well I mean unless you're doing like monsters and crazy stuff and things like that in which case anatomy can get pretty crazy but if you're just talking um, straight up typical human muscle like the muscles are in the same place every time right and they can take a very long time to learn but um, they're generally laid out the same way they get transformed by lighting and proportion and all of this but um, they're generally in the same place but clothing can just be radically different from item to item. Um, but you get good reference. It's any individual piece of clothing is not usually as subtle as anatomical form. So yeah, I would say that uh, um, clothing's a little easier. Becker Draw says, what is your idea of the canon of proportion in the human figure? Any particular canon that you like? No. There is uh, no canon that I like. I mean, if you look at real people, people are proportioned completely differently from one another. And I don't believe in anything like a, an ideal proportion that looks more beautiful or anything like that. I think 
uh, let's try drawing with a wood pencil because I'm not quite getting the flows that I want. Whoop. Hold on. The way I've got my monitors is making it so I can't move my camera up. I want you guys to be able to see what I'm doing here. Beluga. Steven, how should a student handle a critique from their teachers? How can they tell if it's a good or bad critique? Um, the only bad critiques, I think, are the ones that get a little bit too serious. Like the teacher is telling you that what you're doing is bad or they're not working with you on your goals or your style and things like that. Any critique that sounds like you shouldn't do that or... Uh, now, I don't mean for like really technical things, right? If you're working within a context where it's like you're trying to understand lighting and you and the teacher and the curriculum are in agreement that you want to learn lighting in terms of reality, in terms of how light works in the real world and use that to represent reality to some degree. Um, within that context, it totally makes sense for a teacher to tell you, right, don't do that because if you're heading towards that kind of reality, that's going to prevent it, right? But outside of context like that, if a teacher, you know, sees you drawing anime, and I have no great love for anime, but I would never tell a student, like, don't draw anime style. Like, that's not good for you. That's not good for your practice and things like that. That's wrong. That's completely wrong. People should do what excites them, and a teacher should be willing to go with you to the place that you want to go. So any critique like that, that gets very ultimate, very self-serious, um, is critiquing, like, not taste, but like the things you're interested in or the things that you want to do and is telling you that you shouldn't do things that you want to do and all of this, uh, I would be very dubious of critiques like that. Anything besides that, it's like there's probably something good to learn from critiques out any that are sort of outside of that realm, almost anything. Just uh, carry it all lightly, you know?
Sorry, I forgot to focus my camera, folks. Oh, and I think I forgot to pump up my lights. Give me a second here. I'm not bothering you. You can stay. You ain't got to worry. Did you finish the Stephen Gates? Hope it came out well, if so. No, I did not. I did that uh, design pass that I did on a stream a couple streams ago. Then um, I started playing around with some different approaches. I looked at seeing if um, it might be better to do that moment, just showing the characters with the gates kind of in the background. I did a thumbnail for that, colored that a little bit. If you're on the Patreon, you saw the thumbnail for that. I posted that to the Patreon. I'm sorry that I keep going out of frame, but uh, my monitors are in the way of pushing my camera back, and I really wanted to draw a tall today for some reason. I don't know why. Caladore Sharp says, Hey, Stephen, just bought the course a few days ago. Feel like it will fill some of my biggest holes as an artist. Oh, well, that's good. Was curious where the term modeling factors comes from. Um, I don't know. I don't know where it comes from. It's been around for a long time. I think it's a relatively old phrase. I think, I might be wrong, but I think like Loomis used that phrase in like figure drawing for all it's worth or one of his books, you know? If they don't call it the modeling factor is usually an instructional book or something, we'll call them uh, the parts of the light or something like that. But that term, modeling factors, has been around for a long time. Hey, Steven, now, says Lalokin, how long for will the reduced form from imagination be on sale? They're just on sale like that. No, and I don't have a time limit on them. Since you can just grab the feedback ticket whenever you're ready. Um, I'm fine just leaving them up like that. Uh, 
LVN says, Stephen, don't you think removing artists' work from AI, database, from AI databases will only delay our inevitable end? They will be able to accumulate enough non-copyrighted data again and return stronger. Uh, there is not good evidence right now to believe that there is enough. It's possible, but there's a lot of hurdles. It, it might be that there's not enough easily accessible non-copyrighted data out there to make a good enough model. Um, now, it could turn out that you could make good models with much less training data, but as of right now, the state of the art is not that. You need huge amounts of training data. The quality that we're seeing from current AI models is an emergent factor of the sheer amount of stuff that they have been trained on. So. Um, no, they may be able to collect a lot of copyrighted data, but when we're talking about needing to train in the billions of data points, that's a huge number. And it really actually might be restrictive um, if you're trying to scrutinize the data set as you go, or if you're looking for data of a very particular type. That actually might be a wall that is quite hard to get over. In the hypothetical, we can just say hypothetically, like, oh, yeah, you know, there's a hypothetically infinite amount of non copyrighted data out there. You know, they could run around and take pictures of trees or whatever on their own. But the question is, would they actually do it? And when, it's, when you're trying to speak about it practically, how hard is it? And as of right now, it seems incredibly hard. It seems incredibly hard. I'm not saying you're wrong. You may be right, but there's, I don't think anybody really. I don't think anybody's really in the position to be certain about that right now. Ayub says, is it possible to have an intense six months of balancing multiple projects, relationship, gym, and work? Because I'm just trying to prepare myself mentally for it. Any advice? Um, six months? Yeah. I'm going to be honest, though. Like super long term, like really long term, um, years? Uh, I think maybe not. Well, it's going to be doable for some people. There's going to be some discipline freaks out there who can do that, but not everybody. Not everybody's going to be able to do that. Let me make sure my focus is still on. Oops. I am the genie of sound. Everybody get down. <laughs> but look, you can do it. You can do it, Ayub. Six months? Yeah, I think six months you can definitely push through. Put in a huge amount of effort, say stupor on top of it. You could definitely do six months. Just much longer than that. You know, if we're talking, you're trying to make that sustainable for years. Um, life is a balance, you know, and things change. I think that there's times, you know, work-life balance in this day and age really might be a myth. Um, might just be sometimes in life is more work and sometimes in life is more life. And that's all right.
Get on your camel and ride. <laughs> Shazam! That's right, Ellis Demon. That's right. It was so nice to catch you and Med together last time. Hope there will be uh, more one and only podcasts. I think there will be. Josh Sleeping says, hey, Stephen, been drawing for about a month now and learned decent anatomy, but now I'm having trouble with clothing. Any tips for me? Thanks. Um, I think for clothing, heavy referencing is important. And just, we don't have the natural expectations of clothing that we do for anatomy in the body. So we can do really weird things like um, the equivalent of having the arm coming out of the equivalent of having the arm coming out of like the torso instead of the shoulder area uh, a mistake that's pretty easily caught once you've been paying attention to drawing for any amount of time and that even non-artist people can notice because it's just so we're so familiar with the body right a mistake of equal obviousness and bigness we can make with clothing and we don't notice it because we just don't have that level of familiarity with t-shirts and jeans and things like that. Well, you know, maybe that, but besides that, like draw a leather jacket from memory. It's like, you're going to destroy it. <laughs> you're going to completely mess it up. Even if you own a leather jacket, even if you have a favorite leather jacket, um, you don't really know it that well. You just don't pay attention to them as much as you think you do. Um, the classic version of that is don't look at a photo right now. Try to draw a bicycle. Good luck. Unless you've purposefully trained, uh, unless you've purposefully rehearsed bicycles before, you're going to make a ridiculous creation. Unless you're like a bike head who like fixes your own bike, then you'll know what struts are supposed to go where and what's supposed to support what. But a non-bike person is just gonna destroy a bicycle even though ostensibly in their head, it's like, oh yeah, two wheels, some, some handlebars, what's the big deal? Same with clothing. Besides that, um, you know, learn the dynamics of clothing, like the different kinds of folds. There's like six of them, you know, pipe, diaper, half lock, zigzag, things like that. Um, if you just look them up, types of folds, drawing, you'll get all sorts of lists. But even that, even if you know that really well, that's not gonna help you, that's not gonna be everything in the long run. You're gonna need reference because the folds are what happens as they wrap over form and are affected by gravity, but that tells you nothing about the structure of clothing, which is the mistakes that I mentioned earlier, or is the realm of the mistakes that I mentioned earlier. The structure of clothing is its own thing that just most people don't understand, unless they're fashion designers or something like that. You need reference for that. Shazam! I'm way down here on the legs now. Steven, have you ever done oil anatomy? Like an anatomy study in oil paint? Uh, an anatomy study in oil paint? No, I don't think I've done that. I don't think I've done a specifically um, anatomy-focused oil painting. I don't think so. The oil paintings that I've done have been mostly portraits and master copies and things like that. Nothing super anatomically focused. Which is kind of interesting because those are some of my favorite oil paintings. Really anatomy focused oil paintings. I really like paintings like... Um, Two Bougaros are a good 
benchmark uh, Bougereau's Flagellation of Christ and Dante and Virgil in Hell are some of my favorite images. Some of my favorite images ever. It's a shame he uh, didn't do more like that. Really went hard on the peasant girls. Steven's so salty about the peasant girls. I think you've mentioned it in like three different vids. It's like, dude, peasant girls in rustic clothing. Very nice, man. I'm sure the people at the salon that you ran were like, wow, William. Wow, Adolf. Incredible. So beautiful. Also, you're my boss, and you decide if my paintings get into the salon, and getting into the salon is what literally determines in our society if you count as a professional artist. Is it possible that I may be kissing your ass here a little bit? Impossible. Impossible. They're lovely peasant girls. William. You were incredible at painting oily, naked men. Why did you stop? Why did you stop, William? Where the hell is my ruler? Let me just make sure my eyes are not deceiving me here and that I have overdrawn the legs at least. What is this? Just want to make sure that I'm overdrawing the legs. Uh, that is to say they're too long rather than too short. I'm not looking for a precise measurement.
Interesting moment to observe from a learner's perspective while getting the ruler out. <laughs> Sometimes you just need to measure it, you know? It's that simple. I always remember uh, there's a moment in Richard Schmidt's A la Prima. <clears throat> There's a moment in Alla Prima by Richard Schmid where he mentions if he's working site size, um, not site size, uh, actual size on a painting, sometimes he'll just go up to the model with a ruler and measure a part of that <laughs> to make sure that it's the right length. Sculptors do that all the time. They'll do either actual measurements and just transfer it one-to-one -one over to a life-size sculpture, or they'll uh, use proportional calipers that'll cut it in half or a fourth or whatever it is they need, transfer it to their sculpture. Why am I using this HB to put in shadows? I should probably be doing that with something else. Be LS Demon says beautiful girls are hard to draw as well as oily naked men, though. I'll take you to court on that one. I've got exhibits. I'm just kidding for the record. Everybody calm down. I'm just joking. And it's always very important for me to make a disclaimer that I'm just joking so that people believe that I'm joking, when in truth, I'm being completely honest. And it's definitely way harder to draw muscly men than it is to draw smooth, easy ladies. Again, I'm just joking. I know now it must seem like we're too many layers deep and it's getting a little difficult to track what I actually believe. But I think if you want to know what I actually believe, just look at my artwork. What, what, what does my artwork seem to indicate I actually believe? Again, that's just, <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. It's personal preference, all right? And again, I totally understand. A lot of layers, it's getting very confusing. What does Steven think? He's always saying these things online about how anything's good, art's wide open, you can do whatever you want, you can be whatever you want, there's nothing to worry about. It must be very confusing. It must be very confusing. And some would say that this level of confusion is a manipulation tactic. But those people have spent too much time in therapy. Too much time in therapy. They've let their therapists get in their heads and control what they think. Is that my fault? No, it's theirs. I'm faultless, blameless in all of this. Jenna says, can you explain to me what you meant by the structure of the clothing? I mean, the literal real world structure of clothing, like what a fashion, I guess maybe not a fashion designer, though I'm sure fashion designers know it, but like what a seamstress would need to know or a, a seam, seamster, seam, seamstress or seamster, whatever one of them would need to know, <laughs> whatever a non-gendered seamer would need to know. That's what I mean by the structure of clothing. 
where do you need to put stitches? Like everything on clothing, like where seams are, where stitches go, where things are reinforced. Every line is not, um, is not only aesthetic, but also has a functional purpose. And these days they're both aesthetic and, and functional, but that's what I mean, that kind of knowledge. This is the fashion episode, I take it. And it seems to be a lot of questions about clothing, which is interesting because I don't draw a lot of clothing. I guess on the design streams, I usually draw a bit of clothing, mostly armor though. Um, any tips on clothing on how to draw folds from memory rather than reference? Yeah, I really do think reference is the ground floor there. Um, your clothing is varied enough that you're only ever going to do great folds from ref from memory on a, like a kind a specific kind of clothing that you've drawn many many times that's what you're going to get it on so you're not dude everybody has learned the types of folds right in in the art community everybody learns the types of folds pipe half lock zig zigzag diaper um all of the all the folds everybody learns them it's not that hard to learn their dynamics does that unlock the whole universe of great clothing drawing for all of those people no and the reason is simple, clothing is too complicated. It's far too vast. And every material, every different kind of structure interacts with somebody's body differently and it makes the clothing hold itself up differently as well. What do I mean by hold itself up differently? Um, different types of materials have different structure, right? So throw a satin dress on the ground and then throw a leather jacket on the ground right next to it 
and you will see that they definitely have different structural integrity. The leather jacket is much more capable of holding itself up than the satin dresses. So the leather jacket, when it's on a person, can depart from their anatomy and their form more severely than the satin dress ever could unless the satin dress is billowing or something like that, but in a stationary position. And there, you know, stationary now it's in movement and all this stuff. These things are far too vast. So you're only ever gonna do convincing folds on kinds of clothing that you understand very well and you have rehearsed many, many times. Um, there is no core unlock for clothing that is gonna make you draw all clothing well from the top of your head. Um, and a lot of people try to overcome that and this is perfectly valid, by basically reducing clothing down to graphic design, right? So it's less about the reality of the clothing, the integrity of the clothing, the structure of the clothing, and it's more about just the shapes of color uh, and value interacting with each other. It doesn't, it's not really so concerned with the way that it's structured. A lot of fantasy stuff has this, anime clothing has this. Um, it's just the most bang for your buck for differentiating characters um, without getting mired in the reality of material. There's nothing wrong with that, but it is a compromise. There's no way to say it's not a compromise. Well, maybe compromise is the wrong word, but it's just, it's a choice. It's a design choice. It's not what real clothing is like. Get on your camel and ride. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What paper do you use? This is Strathmore 400 series bristle paper smooth. Mia LaRue says, yes, I hardly ever get to watch you live. Time zone difference is a bummer sometimes. Welcome, welcome. I'm glad you caught it. I really am. Josh Sleeping says, how do you shade and draw so realistically? When I draw, it always looks cartoonish. I mean, that's just the result of um, that being what I was heading towards for years. You know, I've bent, bent a huge amount of life effort towards doing, achieving that. So the, the answer to how is uh, the summation of thousands and thousands of hours of asking myself that question. How the hell can I draw and shade realistically? And for me, I had a lot of demands, you know, freely from imagination for a lot of it. 
fun, not letting it get mired in uh, boredom for the sake of completing pictures. I had a lot of demands on what I wanted out of my practice, and I just uh, I sought my own answers, you know? It's what every artist has to do. And there's nothing wrong with working cartoonish if that's what you like. What are your thoughts on capturing subtle facial expressions? Um, I don't know about subtle ones, but I think emojis are a good basis. If I need to capture a specific facial expression, I literally usually just draw an emoji on the face, and then I elaborate that, make it look more realistic. But the emojis work for a reason, you know? It's just that basic graphic relationship between eyes, mouth, brows, things like that. So I think it's a really good way to just start a head off very lightly and they're indicated. That way you know it would be very difficult to lose the overall read of the expression. Subtle ones? I don't know what to say about subtle. Don't think I have much experience with that. Hello, Stephen from Turkey. Hello, F.A. Hello from New York. Have you used any mechanical pencil until now? Uh, not on this drawing, but there was a few other drawings underneath this one that I erased that I started with mechanical pencil. But then uh, on a big drawing like this, I wasn't quite getting the flow that I wanted, so I wanted to go underhand. So I switched to wood pencil. I don't like drawing underhand with mechanicals. The point is too small, it kind of gets hung up on the collar there. You can do it though, it's just, I don't like it. Mm -hmm. 
get down with the genie. Whoa. My water bottle is getting green screened out. How can you do this without control Z and liquefy? Is this magic? This is good old fashioned drawing right here. Don't get me wrong. If, uh, if there was liquefy on my paper, I would totally use it. <laughs> if this was magic digi paper that you could manipulate, it would sort of very subtly vibrate its fibers to move the graphite grains around and let you liquefy your drawing by using a phone app or something. I would totally use it. Sounds great. Marvin says, are you using any reference for this drawing? No, not right now. If, um, usually for a drawing like this, if I were to want to go all the way with this, um, 
this is pretty normal, right? This is, at least right now, this is just a normal male torso for the most part. So for a drawing like this, um, I would at some point, I would give this a sincere stab on my own to see what I think, you know, to just have my opinion on it in an unfiltered way. But at some point, if I wanted to go all the way with it, I would probably go digging for a reference that looks very similar. And that's my preferred process for most stuff that uses reference. Give it a stab, do the sketch first, just looking at nothing, just so that it's your, your mental image instead of another image. And then I'll dig through references and find either one reference that happens to look a lot like it, you know, close enough, or I will look for multiple references that have different parts. So it's like, oh, that arm looks like the arm from this reference. Those legs look like the legs from this reference. And I'll just kind of use them all for the part that's appropriate. <clears throat> but right now, no, nothing. <laughs> Ali Z says, did you get a perm or am I dumb and your hair is naturally curly? I've never noticed before. My hair is naturally curly. Is shadow shapes a form an artist's signature or can it be? Hmm? Is shadow shapes, shadow shapes a form of an artist's signature or can it be? I think I know what you mean. I think you're saying, um, can the way you handle shadow shapes be part of your artist's signature? And I think so, yeah. I mean, on the extreme end, look at someone like Mike Mignola. Um, it's all shadow shapes and his work is recognizable instantly, right? Like all of the, the design of the characters, the composition, the form language, the lighting is all occurring within the shadow shapes. It's, do, it's doing the whole lift. So yeah, on the extreme end of the spectrum, they can totally become part of your signature. Yes, oh, sorry, Stephen, don't worry about it, Will. Did you give the figure an extra, did you give the figure an extra finger on purpose? Yes, you gotta throw the AIs off. Got to throw the AIs off. They're getting too good at hands. Got to feed them some false information. When did you start drawing? Uh, when I was about five years old. So, 28-ish years ago. But I think on timelines that long, it's not really super useful to be like, oh, that's how long I've been drawing. It's like, yeah, well, I've been drawing a million different ways in those 28 years, you know? Sometimes I was more focused, sometimes I was less focused, sometimes I was driven by improvement, other times not, I was just wanted to draw. Sometimes I was career focused, years where I wasn't. It's like there's just so many factors. I don't think it's very useful to think in those terms after a certain point.
If I do digital art, will I forget how to do normal graphite art? No, you can, you can lose momentum for your chops. That does happen. They return if you just uh, go back to heavy drawing. But you never lose, a lot of drawing is concepts. You know, it's eurekas that you have, things that you discover that you can put into words. And those are sort of, um, that's like if drawing was an RPG, it's like the momentum is how many souls you're carrying, trying not to die and lose your souls. Um, and if you, and the eurekas are like when you solidify your souls into a new level and you don't lose that when you die. Does that make sense? Sorry, I'm making fun of that because uh, I hate the gamification of drawing and the way everybody analogizes it to working out or video games and leveling up and all that stuff. It was just very apt there. But um, in general, I don't like those kinds of analogies because they lead to drawing hustle culture, which is the stupidest thing anyone ever came up with. Like really? Hustle culture? for art. Easy tiger. It's like, if that's the energy you're looking for, maybe sell used cars instead of drawing. It's a weird, weird place to put hustle culture. I am the genie of sound. Everybody get down. William says, hey, Stephen, I know you like drawing creatures. Was there a certain movie when you were younger that made you like this? For me, it was Predator. Um, I did like Predator, but uh, Alien, definitely for me. I think less movies, more video games were my bigger inspiration for creatures. You know, boss monsters were a big inspiration for me. Shadow of the Colossus, all the Final Fantasy monsters, Omega Weapon, Ruby Weapon, Ultima Weapon, all the summons, Bahamut, Anima, Ifrit. I think those were the bigger influences for me for creatures. For movies, definitely, yeah. Alien, Aliens. Um, John Carpenter's The Thing. Do that hand more. 
I also read a lot of, um, like occult books when I was little. So those also inspired my fascination in creatures, descriptions of angels and demons and things like that. Then there was also real world stuff, like I was fascinated with giant squids when I was little. Fascination in, in terms of horrified. And uh, I used to draw them in my sketchbook all the time, over and over and over again. Just, let's recapitulate the fear. Let's feel it again. No, I'm scared. I don't care. I'm drawing, and you will draw it. Drawing, please, don't make me do it. Shut up. Draw the squid. Me. Draw the squid. We've all been there. We've all been there. Whoa, easy. What's up? I know, I know you're very hungry, but you're on a diet. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's not my fault. The in-laws did this to you. That's what you get for begging for pizza and sausages. All right, go on, go to bed. Steven, I see you adapting a darker, more adult version of the Smurfs. Could it happen? Surely, surely. I mean, it, it writes itself. I mean, Gargamel was a truly creepy dude. I mean, tch, the things he could have done to them, you know, if he got his hands on them. Anybody off the street could write this fucking thing. People would be vomiting in the movie theater. What's up, Goblin Fam? Says Lack Asylum. Didn't catch the notification of the stream I was drawing. Good. It's like if you get the if you're drawing when you get the stream notification, it's like just stay drawing. It's perfectly fine. You're already doing what I would hope you would do. And this is of course about you doing what I hope you would do. Outreacher says, hello, I just stumbled in here through YouTube Rex. Welcome. God only knows why YouTube would recommend this stream. Maybe you have a long history of uh, searching YouTube for monster drawings.
Do you have a favorite video game of all time? Of all time? You have a favorite video game of all time? Um, Bloodborne. Definitely Bloodborne. Damn, it would be exciting to have that replaced, no? <laughs> that would be an exciting day to be playing a game and be like, whoa, am I enjoying this more than Bloodborne? Holy shit. Bloodborne cart will dethrone it. I don't doubt it. Stephen must draw, lest the night carry on forever. Jack Foster says, whoa, underappreciated? This guy never saw the New York Times article. Quality is undeniable. <laughs> Solid reference there, Jack. Solid reference. You have excellent taste. I have not seen Toshiro Maeda's work. Again, what usually happens there is that I'm not recognizing the name, and I have seen their work. <clears throat> I'm bad with names, always have been.
I bit my tongue really hard when I was eating too ravenously at a 4th of July party. Left a big cut on the top of my tongue. <laughs> it's making it a little hard to talk. My desire has gone away from me. like the scratchy yeah <clears throat> me not being able to talk means more scratchies for you you get a scratch and you get a scratch Did you work on the latest ESO chapter, Necrom? No, I did not. By the way, Steven, your art looks perfect for Warhammer 40K, especially now that you can draw bots. Oh, thank you. It's very kind of you to say. I don't know if uh, the Warhammer 40K people agree. Games Workshop. <laughs> they, probably, they probably look at my work and they're still like, not dark enough. They look at my... They look at my overwrought, tortured demons, and they're like, still not nearly dark enough, not grim enough.
I'm squinting right now. <clears throat> For all of you who are taking the course, note that I am drawing while squinting right now.
What to do with the penis? What to do with the penis? That is always the question. What to do with the penis? You can't just draw the penis. Then you can't show the art to anybody. Then you'll get banned on YouTube and Instagram and TikTok and from your living room and your in-laws will be like whoa uh, that's nice what to do with the penis what to do with the penis You guys are funny. You guys are funny. You got some funny suggestions in there. Y'all are some funny fuckers, you know that? That's me at uh, the Drawing Rodeo, which it's not my first of. Yep, you youngins always got some funny ideas. You can draw the mask from the movie The Mask starring Jim Carrey, a movie that is adored by Steven Zapata's Abuelita. <laughs> oh my god. Smoking! Just Jim Carrey's green face down there going smoking. Cuban Pete, yep. You're thinking of the right movie. Yes, sir, I'm Cuban Pete. I'm the king of the rumba beat. When I play the maracas, I go chee chee boo chee chee boo. All right, everyone. I've actually got a hard out today at two.
So if you've ever had questions, now's the time. Throw them in the chat. Damn thing on my tongue. <clears throat> Can we use Payoneer card to purchase the course? I don't know what that is. I do not know what that is. If, um, if it's the kind of, the two payment processors available for the course are PayPal and Stripe. And Stripe takes most credit cards or debit cards. So if Payoneer card is accepted by Stripe, you can use it. Besides that, I don't know what that is. And um, if it's like an unusual kind of card, if uh, Stripe doesn't accept it, no, you won't be able to. Fishflop says, could you ever love me? Could I learn to love you? You know, maybe. Maybe it's a sexy goblin. Really what, when we investigate it philosophically, isn't a sexy goblin? At a certain point, I'm just saying, if we go all the way down, it's really like everything is a sexy goblin. That's what I would say. Steven, do I just draw a lot to learn how to draw a lot of things? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's, there's utility in studying in a focused way but nothing is more important than drawing than just drawing um now you're gonna want to direct it but the thing is you can direct it in almost any way anything will do truly um there's very few wrong ways to practice or bad courses to go down uh the most common mistake and the one that everybody falls into is not working not doing the drawings not being creative. Um, so prioritize your creativity. Don't spend too much time studying. Spend um, equal or more time just being creative and drawing your, your own stuff um, and just keep going. That's always going to be the most important thing. You don't draw all the way down on stream, right? What does that mean? You don't draw all the way down. Like on the paper? That's just because that's as pulled back as my camera will go. Actually, I could pull it back a bit more. I just don't have it like that right now. I can bring it up. Oh no, it is all the way up. Yeah, that's just as far up as my camera will go. But there you can see I don't really have much down there for the legs. Most of the action is up here. Could I pay for the course with 12 years of manual labor as an indentured servant to Steven Zapata? Yes. Yeah. Serious question. What are you doing for a living? Are you doing something except selling tutorials and making YouTube videos? Um, you know, in art, I think that's a difficult... I don't try to, I try not to answer that question um, like definitively um, because in art, you very rarely do the same thing for more than a couple years. So right now, uh, yeah, I'm not like doing commercial work right now. I'm just selling courses, teaching. Um, teaching has been my focus, I'd say for the past two-ish years, something like that. But in art, everything changes, you know, art, everything change. in art, everything changes. I don't know. Um, my life experience has not made it so that I could expect that that would continue indefinitely. Yeah. And um, it's like I've spent the past decade doing commercial work. Um, if I spend two years teaching and then I go 30 years 
uh, after that, doing commercial work again, would I really look back on it as like, would I even notice the two years teaching? I don't know. I'm just musing, yeah. The, these days I'm just uh, doing my own thing and teaching. I'm not doing any commercial work right now. It's nice to take a break from it. You know, I've done it for a long time and it's a lot of work. <laughs> Should you use a fixative after rendering your drawings? It's up to you. I never got into the habit of doing it because um, uh, I'm from New York City, so I never had space. I never really had like a backyard where I could go spray or um, anything like that. And uh, so it was all shared space. I'd be spraying toxic chemicals uh, in someone else's space. So I just never built the habit. I don't think uh, like in my folio of uh, finished stuff, I don't think I have any spray drawings. I don't really spray my drawings. But if I worked in like charcoal, I would because charcoal is very messy, but graphite, the way that I use it, it doesn't really smudge much. It's very resistant to smudging on its own. Uh, do you stretch your hands before drawing? Not really before, but when they hurt during drawing, I will do this thing. I'll do that thing for sure. Go both ways. Nick says, will I ever find true love? I think so. I think he will, Nick. I think he will. I mean, you're a very nice guy. And I've never seen a picture of your fucking face, but I know you're beautiful. <laughs> Amber Max says, are you using a reference right, are you using a reference right now? Um, no. And way down we go, 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 and way down we go. I completely stopped studying and just creating, and it's been liberating. That's fantastic. I'm glad to hear that. How do you stay graphic while polishing up your pieces? I often end up muddying the painting and killing it. Shadow shapes are usually the main thing to focus on there. They're the, in most pictures of most scales, the shadow shapes are the biggest graphic shapes in the picture. So you keep them definitive and you try not to dilute their power as you render, which um, does require a bit of sophistication. You know, you gotta know your modeling factors. You've got to know where you're keeping core shadows and terminator sharp and control your half tones and things like that. How do I know if it's foreshortening or if I messed up the perspective? Um, I think I'm missing context there for that one. Steven, what's your opinion on people who have drawn for 10 years and never got better? Like. Sammy Ways on Art Station. Um, I don't know who that is, but I, I really don't. Um, I don't have an opinion. I don't, I don't worry about people's practices in that way. Um, I don't know that person. It's like, who cares if they didn't get better? Were they having fun? I mean, if they were having fun for 10 years, that's better than how most people, not, maybe not most, but how a lot of people live their lives. A lot of people can spend 10 years miserable, wanting to check out of life. Um, <laughs> who gives a shit that you didn't get better? If your art was making you happy, if you had a fun time doing it, that's worth its weight in gold. It doesn't weigh anything, but well, maybe if you stacked up the reams of paper, that'd be a significant amount of gold. <laughs> Goodbye, Travis. <laughs> Saman says I have the unhinged chatter riz. All right, I'm gonna go super quick because it's two o'clock and I've really got to go. I've got a hard out of two. Um, what's the youngest age to get an art job? Uh, I guess whatever the child labor laws are <laughs> around you. I mean, it's still labor. So you, you know, you can have your parents sign off on child labor documentation. I think the earliest is like at four, at 13 in some states you can start working if your parents approve it. I don't know. <laughs> Do you worry it will be hard to go back if you're out of industry work for too long? No, no, I don't, no. I don't worry about stuff like that. What if you go to the roof to spray them? I don't have roof access. Uh, da, da, da. what you did for commercial work, comics, games, what games, uh, games, movies, theme parks, marketing, illustration, uh, like print illustration, 
board games, um, storyboards for advertising, uh, stuff like that. What is your favorite shape to keep your kneaded eraser in? In good shape. In good shape. My friend's asking if he can video edit while he watches your stream. I think it shouldn't be permissible though. It's not. Only drawing. Drawing only. Do you know the maker of that anatomy model you have back there? Are there any that you recommend? That is Anatomy Workshop made that one. I've had that one for a long time, probably over 10 years now. I think I, yeah, I bought that back in college when I was taking Ray Bustos' class. So yeah, that'd have to be, yeah, going on over 10 years now. I've had that one for a long time. It, it ain't broken. <laughs> What would you say to people who can only have fun when their art is good? That's a rough spot to be in, dog. Because we all crank out turkeys every now and then. And if you're just going to be miserable about that, ooh, you're going to be miserable a lot. Yeah, you got to ease up on that, I would say. You know, where's that coming from? Where's that coming from? There's got to be a reason for that. Sometimes you got to give yourself a little wiggle room. You know, what's worth more? Having a happy thing you can return to at any time that gives you joy in a world of chaos or another good drawing on the pile? What's worth more? People's answers are going to vary. Mine is different from yours, but I don't know. It's clear to me. It's clear to me. All right, everybody. I have to run. I'm already late here. So I'm going to go. Goodbye, everyone, and I will see you next time. Happy drawing and take care of yourselves. Thank you for being here.